Welcome to the town of Walla Walla in 1895. We are very proud of the fact that our stores will have anything that your heart desires. The latest fashions, candy, cigars, groceries, and especially newspapers. If you can't get to the stores, there's also newspaper delivery. We have a hearty stock of delivery men who can bring you just about anything. Ice and coal and perhaps even some beer. One of the most important delivery men we have is the mailman. We get mail delivery twice a day and we just can't wait to hear from our relatives. We also like to send our family a copy of the Walla Walla Gazette. Today's issue is August 3rd, 1895. The Gazette is in a new home this week. We have moved to spacious and convenient rooms on the second floor of the Kirkman block. Here, we will be glad to welcome our friends. In transferring our machinery, our large press was broken. This necessitated the printing of this issue in abbreviated form on a job press. Next week, the Gazette will appear in usual six-column dress. Social Observations Mrs. J. H. Galloway is visiting with friends in Seattle. Mrs. Miles Poindexter has gone to Brigham Springs to camp. Miss Myrtle Brents has returned after a week's visit in the country. Ex-Marshal W. S. Haley will start next Monday for Trail Creek to visit the mines of that section. He expects to be gone a month. H. A. Vetter was thrown from his wheel Sunday in attempting to cross the streetcar track on Elm Street, cutting his elbow and dislocating his right shoulder. Carrier J. L. Sheets has been off duty on his 15-day vacation. Professor W. G. Alley has been discharging the duties of the position to the satisfaction of everybody. Bruce Crawford and Emil Sanderson went out prospecting on the Blaylock Mountain above Milton Saturday and found grouse very plentiful. The season is open after August 1st. Monday afternoon, while practicing with her wheel, Mrs. Nellie K. Carver of Chase Avenue had the misfortune to fall and break the small bone of her left leg near the ankle. Dr. Shaw reduced the fracture, and she was removed to her home. Mr. John Cameron and wife, who crossed Trail Ridge on horseback and hunted and fished in the Little Salmon and Lower Grand Ronde, have been heard from. They are camping at Wallowa Lake. Mrs. Cameron is the only white woman who has passed over this rugged trail. Horse thief captured while asking for mail at the post office. Friday last, word from the Sheriff of Wasco County, Oregon was received by Sheriff Ellingsworth stating that a man by the name of Blueford Douglas was wanted there for horse stealing and that it was supposed he had started for Walla Walla. He advised Sheriff Ellingsworth that Douglas would probably call at the post office for his mail, in which case he could be apprehended. A watch was placed at the post office and Tuesday morning about 8 o'clock, Douglas called and received a letter. He was promptly arrested. Douglas procured the services of an attorney who at once commenced to get a writ of habeas corpus, but before it was completed, Deputy Sheriff received instructions by telephone to swear out a complaint, 
which was done, thereby defeating the habeas corpus proceedings. The particular crime for which Douglas was arrested is the stealing of a horse and saddle near the Dalles. In searching him, letters were found by the officers which indicate that he is guilty of things far more serious. He begged to be allowed to burn the letters in the presence of the officers, but his request was not granted. He says he can easily prove his innocence when taken to the Dalles, but one would judge from his being so averse to going there that it is simply talk on his part. Mr. Otto Linder was married to Miss Clara Mooney in Pendleton Tuesday. After the ceremony, the couple were received at the residence of the bride's sister, Mrs. Harry Nelson. Miss Mooney was a resident of Starbuck and during her stay there was considered one of the bells of the burg. Mr. and Mrs. Linder visited friends in Wallula and Walla Walla Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and then took the Northern Pacific for the east and later part of the week. Their future home will be Argenta, Arkansas. They will keep tabs on their friends in the west by reading the Weekly Gazette. A good catch. As Dr. Keeler was driving between his office and St. Mary's Hospital one day this week, he saw a respectably dressed man dash around a corner and enter an open gate with such speed that he tumbled headlong. Quickly regaining his footing, he hastily entered an outbuilding. The doctor had driven but a short distance when he met one of the employees of Jake Betts Brewery in a state of great excitement. Mein Gott, he exclaimed, addressing the doctor. A man just schwumped in here and stole mein watch and schwumped out mit it. The doctor informed his German friend of what he had seen, drove up town, procured an officer, and returned. Near the courthouse, a man was seen walking leisurely along, his hands clasped behind his back, his eyes gazing skyward, and the carriage of his body denoting that he was at peace with all mankind. Nothing could have been more innocent. That is the man, Keeler whispered to the officer. The officer, to make sure of not having his prey escaped, thanked the doctor as he alighted and started apparently to pass the thief. Coming up with him, he took hold of him and volunteered him the information that he was wanted at police headquarters. Instantly, the demeanor of the man changed to that of a wet rag, and as he surrendered himself to the inevitable, he muttered, H. John J. Golden's party started Monday from Goldendale for the Mount Adams Mining District. Colonel E.B. Wise will accompany the party with a view of making a careful search for the lost mine on Indian Creek. It seems many years ago when Colonel Wise was sheriff of Klickitat, an aged Indian often wanted his benefactor to go to the scene of his find, but Colonel Wise could never take the time to go with the Indian who was since died. Colonel Wise believes from the bearings that he can find the mine. The wires were crossed and the secret of his heart was laid bare. Once in a little town called Walla Walla, in a cottage on the corner of two well-traveled streets, there came a call at the telephone and the young lady of the house responded to the ring. Hello? Well? Came the answer. Is that you, May? Yes. Well, little sweetheart, would you like to go to the opera tonight? I... I don't know, the lady faltered. Can't you make arrangements to go with me, pet? You know I shall be so disappointed if you won't accompany me, my love. 
I will stay at home if you can't go. But darling, won't you go for my sake? Try, sweetheart, won't you? All this was rolled off without a second's pause, so when the party speaking stopped to take a breath, the lady answered, I, I, I think I would really like to go with you, but I don't believe I know who you are. What is the name, please? Well, aren't you May? No, sir, I am not. I'm... But the phone was thrown up with a bang, which goes to prove the man hasn't much curiosity, for he did not wait to hear her name. He now is contemplating a damage suit against the Inland Telephone Company for allowing the wires to become crossed. Chased a Burglar Tuesday, while the family of Superintendent Langdon of the Walla Walla Water Company were uptown viewing the circus parade, a bold thief entered their home east of town on the Water Company's reserve and proceeded to help himself to what he felt would be the most beneficial to him. He made a slight miscalculation in time, which came near being serious to him. He was just emerging laden with goods of various kinds, when Mrs. Langdon and her daughter drove up. They took in the situation at once and gave chase and commanded the burglar to drop his plunder. Either out of respect for the lady's wishes or for his own safety, he dropped the plunder and made himself scarce. Mr. Langdon Jr. arrived about that time and made a hunt, revolver in hand but his burglarship had made good his escape. Mill Creek Campers One advantage in Mill Creek for a summer resort is that it is an easy drive from the city to any of its groves. True, up near the old mill, the road is rough and stony, but still it is not steep. Two hours will suffice for a passage to or from civilization whereas more than four times that length of time are consumed in climbing or descending one of the high mountains. The new bridge, which was put up last spring at the first crossing of Mill Creek, completes the chain of bridges, which greatly facilitates travel. The dread of teamsters and campers in the old days was the fords, which were deep and difficult on account of the boulders. While the fishing in Mill Creek is about as good as that in any of the streams near Walla Walla, it is not what it was 10 years ago. It is unusual for a bull trout to be taken on the line, and brook and mountain trout weighing over half a pound are rare. Nevertheless, the little ones are sweet and when fried to a crisp brown are a luxury on the table. By going out for an hour or two each evening, a good angler may supply several tents with this Pisces fruit. The story about the strange man making midnight raids upon the camps, where there were no male protectors and scaring the women, is not now so often repeated as it was a week ago. When the husbands and fathers banded together last Sunday and made an investigation, they came to the conclusion that the only disturbing element in the camps was a rude cow. The women, however, cannot be made to believe that a cow could be so naughty as to scare white-robed angels into the trees. In their opinion, man is the only creature who could be so villainous.